just as you do if you own yourself a swimming pool, you have floating things to lie on and play in the pool with and have fun in the pool. Well, I've done the same for a pond and what I've got is a whole selection of things from floating plant holders like these where you'll just come and put your marginal plant in, you'll just drop that in. This is a bit of an artificial plant but it would be a, it would be a real one if it was a pond and that will just float around your pond and it looks quite attractive. The advantage with these floating rocks is that, and floating islands like this one down here is the fact that you've people that have got big fish, big koi carp fish, they tear your plants apart so you can't really have greenery in your pond because they're killing it all the time. Whereas this way you can have these floating islands and, and some of them are quite large like this one here, you know, that's um, nearly three feet by three feet and you can put three big, oh, not big plants, but you can put three plants in those. What I typically suggest you do is you pull the plant out of the pot for this particular type and you um, put some gravel just in the bottom so the soil doesn't just wash out and then you put the plant in there and you decorate the top of it with gravel, decorative gravel and that way it looks nice and then the plant roots are filled with water because it, it sinks down about halfway. Um, so for example the water will be coming up to here so all the roots will be in the water which is what they need and then they're just going to flourish in your pond and you know if you've got a big sized pond look at that it's just magic having an island in the middle of that. This is a slightly, this is our floating islands, they're floating rocks the ones that I've just talked about. The floating island here this has just got this material, you don't need to use gravel in this case because this is your netting material, your, your roots of your marginal plants are just going to grow all through that and it's just going to be covered in a mass of plants when the, when the season's right. So this is um, a larger one, this is four foot by three foot, that's great. We have, what else we got? These, these are our sunken hide logs but also our floating rocks, uh, floating logs I should say and I'm a, I'm a turtle enthusiast so I've grown up always having turtles in Australia. I love putting these in ponds and they don't turn the colour of your pond tannin colour which what happens with wood when you put it in water. Um, these will just stay in there and they'll float and that way your turtles will come up there and sun themselves which they need to do to keep themselves healthy. So these floating logs are just fantastic. Um, there's a range of those like this. So actually here's my smallest one. So this, this is going to capsize if a big turtle tries to swim on that one. So you want something pretty small for that. Uh, that could even go in a fish tank and still work really well. And then we come up to this which is just shy of four foot. And um, you, you know I've put some of these in the local dams down at the golf course where I live. And every day I drive past there there's three to four turtles on it. Sometimes little ones this big with a big one like this here. And it just looks fantastic. They love it. So floating, floating logs are fantastic for, for your ponds. Here's a bigger one. This is about seven foot long. Uh, great, just decorative pieces that you can have sitting in your pond or around the, the edge of your pond to make it look more natural. So we've got logs, we've got islands, we've got floating rocks, we've got floating crocodiles. Why not, you know? <laughs> I don't know whether it really works, but they say it keeps the heron away when you've got this floating around in your pond. So this is a little freshwater crocodile from Australia, a replica of that. It's about four foot long. And then we have, for you Americans, we have a floating alligator. Uh, we actually call this our eight foot floating alligator. I don't know why because it's actually about seven foot but by the way it looks just as good as the other one. It'll float, it'll float under, under the, oh, not under the water but about halfway and his eyes just pop out and he just looks fantastic. So uh, another little recommendation what you can do is you can put a, uh, a screw in here and then that screw you can tie some uh, tie some string to that or some fishing line and take and take that down to a rock on the bottom of the tank and it's um it'll just stay in the middle of the pond and not get sucked into your skimmer box which is often what will happen if you don't tie these things down so um, that's it and then behind me is a big sunken hide log and what's really good for these is you can um, put those in, your fish, your big koi, your fish love it, it gives them protection from the raccoons as well which uh, you guys have over in America, we don't have in Australia but we certainly do have the herons so this way the fish can swim in that, we've got a range of sizes of these and 
they look natural and they also work really well for your fish and keeping them uh, a safe spot in your pond. So um, actually I'm going to move to one more thing for the pond. By the way, let me just run over here. Um, what I hate seeing is seeing a pump and an electrical lead and tubing come out of your pond. So we make these um, pump cover rocks. This is our large one, small and medium and then they'll simply just cover your pump and then your tubing as well so you don't see any of that so whenever you have that shown keep in mind you've got pump cover rocks to cover that so whole selection of stuff all work all easy and fun to play with so thanks for joining me